Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah It's important that we know and understand the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Because that gives us the tools in order to distinguish al-khabith min al-tayyib To distinguish between uh, wickedness or that which is uh, not beneficial for us and that which is tayyib, that which is good, and that which is based upon righteousness. And if we look at the madhab of the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, we'll find that that madhab is the tayyib. It is the madhab of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is a madhab, it's a minhaj, it's a methodology in which we have to adhere to. If we adhere to that madhab, we find safety in our religion. When we embrace new methodologies, new ways of trying to break away from the original pristine creed and methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, we find only shar, really only shar, even if it seems to go in accordance with our desires. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If tarakat al-Yahud ala ihta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara ala ithnatayn wa sab'in firqa, wa sataftariku hathihi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nar ila wahida. Kulna men hiya ya Rasulullah, kulla qal, men kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al-yawm, kama qala nabiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let us know that the Jews broke into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects. His nation, meaning the nation of Muslims, would break into 73 sects or groups, all of them in the fire except one. Meaning that these are groups, they're not eternally residing in Jahannam, no. But that means that they are within the Ummah, because he said, my Ummah would break into 73 sects. So from this, some of the scholars mentioned that these 73 sects are within the fold of Islam, but yet the fact that they are part of the sect means that they, uh, you know, meaning they've broken away from the pristine sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the menhaj of his companions, meaning the menhaj of the Salaf Asani, that now they're mustahik bit finnar. They are rightfully deserving of the hellfire. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for them to be in the fire, he will punish them and purify them in the fire and take them out as long as they were Muslim. If he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will pardon them. And that's for our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the general hukum is for breaking into sectarian, to breaking into these groups and sects and these modern day jama'at, that these people are mustahik bin nar, you know, that they have a punishment that is... Uh, that they are deserving of in accordance with the book and the sunnah. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, All of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they? Ya Rasulullah. <coughs> he said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. <laughs> when we look at groups like Akhwan and Muslimin, we have to be honest with ourselves. Because I find that some of the people, or many of the people praise them, uh, or they hold beliefs very similar, they, they adhere to their beliefs or their methodology for change and are not really aware of how they depart from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This short discussion or this short kalima, if you will, I'm not going to go into depth about Akhwan Muslimin, but I'm going to keep it very, very general and very simple and very short. And that our main task as Muslims and our goal should be to adhere to the book and the sunnah so we can get to paradise. So we can fulfill the divine purpose why we were created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. When we look at groups like Akhwan and Muslimin, they fit because of their departure from the madhab of the salaf. So someone who praises them either is not really truly aware of what the sunnah is 
and what the Sunnah dictates, and they have deviated from that, so that's why they would praise the Khwana Muslimin or, or these other sects. Khwana Muslimin, I say, is a, a group a little bit different from a sect, and I've talked about the difference between a sect and a group prior to this. Um, so they depart from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So someone who says and has warm feelings towards him, either they themselves are deviant or fo and following their desires, or they are ignorant of Akhwana Muslimin or ignorant of the Sunnah, or perhaps they are just in general following their desires because it feels good, because they're not going with the text. And I'm going to give you an example at the end uh, of this discussion. So first, let's establish the importance of following the sunnah and not breaking into groups and sects and not deviating, not being like the guy they called Sheikh Faisal, the, the um, extreme takfiri. So he's not he's not a part of Akhwana Muslimin. Akhwana Muslimin is a stage they believe the underlying uh, part of their methodology leads to takfir. And the more extreme amongst them, you'll find that they are just tikfiris. And almost all the time, I have never, and I've met, of course, thousands of Muslims. Whenever you have a discussion, someone influenced by Akhwan al-Muslimin, they always, it's always about the governments. And they almost always either make tikfir of them or just barely give them any Islam left. This is just, that's the, because it's their minhaj. And if you're honest with yourself, <laughs> uh, then you, if you're honest with yourself <clears throat> as an adherent of that med, uh, that uh, minhaj, then you 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 would have to agree. You have to be honest. You won't find an akhwani that generally doesn't uh, make takfir of all the governments, basically saying there are no Muslim governments or we should rebel, we need to protest, we need to overthrow coups, all the kind of things, because that is a part of their general menhaj, even if they soften themselves out in the general public. But as far as their, usually what's an underlying part of their itiqad or just a part of their menhaj methodology, then you'll find this. Is common, but let's see what the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the importance of the guidance of the Sunnah. Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala he said, "Ma farhatu bi shayin fil Islam ashad farhan bi an qalbi lam yudhulhu shayun min hadi al ahwa." Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala he said, "I was not." I've not uh, found anything that brought me more happiness re with regards to Islam more uh, and in my heart more than the fact that I did not enter into those desires, meaning bid'ah and the desires of Ahla bid'ah. And at the time of Abdullah bin Umar, that would be like the Khawarij, the Qadariya, you know, so the Takfirin and the Qadariya and others. In their beginning of deviance. Wallahu musta'an. Yukul Abu Aliya, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Qal, Ma adri, ayya ni'matain ala alay, a'adham, an adkhalani Allah fil Islam, o a'afani min hadhi al ahwa. Abu Aliya, one of our salaf al salih, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatin, Wasiya. He said, I don't know which blessing is greater, greater from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he entered me into Islam or he protected me from those desires, meaning from the people of Bid'ah. This is why I know and I understand why in contemporary times so many people dislike dislike. Uh, Salafis and dislike uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and claim that they're from Ahl Sunnah. So many of the people of Bid'ah, whether it's the Maturidiyya or the uh, uh, any of the Anwar Sufiyya 
or it's groups like Akhwan al-Muslimin or Jama'at al-Tabliq or any of these others or any of the more extreme takfiris, Jama'at al-Takfir wa Hijra, Daesh or ISIS or Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and these other people. They detest Ahlul Sunnah and they detest the Salafi Minhaj because they don't like, because they're people of desires first, and they don't like that Ahlul Sunnah spends time refuting those people and those ideologies. Because Ahlul Sunnah has a love for the Ummah and a love for following the book and the Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, وَاَتَسِمُ بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Jamian Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So Allah commands you to be one ummah, to hold on to his rope. And the rope is the book and the sunnah. It's the madhab of the salaf al-salih. A pristine, clean minhaj. How the sahaba, did the sahaba make tikfir? Did the sahaba be, be, busy themselves with that? Did the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala ajma'in wa tabi'in wa tabi'in wa tabi'in Did they believe about, was it their, their usul and their minhaj to rebel against the leaders? Did they believe in irja and saying that iman is not a part of faith? Did they practice these extreme Sufi practices and grave worship and all the bid'ah and khurafat we see in these days? And if we look and we answer all those questions honestly, we'll say no, because they weren't people of Hawa. They detested Hawa. They detested desires. They detested sectarianism. They wanted to adhere to the book and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its pristine form and be one jama'ah, one ummah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa rashidin al mahdin It's upon you, my sunnah and the rightly guided khulafa rashidin al mahdin Meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'in. That's, that's what we're ordered to adhere to. Imam Ahmed, rahmatullahi he said, or it was said to him, Ya Abu Abdullah, ahyak Allah ala Islam, qal, wa sunnah. Someone said to uh, Imam Ahmed said, Ya Abu Abdullah, O Abu Abdullah, O father of Abdullah. Allah rev uh, revived Islam through you or, or raised you on Islam, you know, the, the blessing of Islam. And he's also a, a sword of the sunnah and spreading Islam. Or is spreading the sun. And he said, Qal, his response to that, you know, of Islam, he said, was sunnah. And the sunnah. Because Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. Ahabatifillah, the creed of Ahl Bid'ah, of takfir, without the, the right to do so, based on Hawa based on disagreement, because you differ with us, because you don't love my sheikh. How many people make takfir because you don't accept a mubtadi I like Faisal Jamaiki? Or a mubtadi I like Abu, ha uh, Abu Hamza uh, Misri? Or Abu Qatada Philistini? Or Abu Muhammad uh, Al-Maqtasi? Wa ghayrihim kathir. So, so many people make takfir of you for that. Like they, like they themselves represent and an asl of the religion of Islam. In fact, they themselves discard usul of Islam with their innovated takfiri ideology, which is so dangerous and so filthy and is only a madhab that leads to bloodshed and ignorance and foolishness. And we've seen it in practice. We've years of experience. The scholars have years of experience, and all throughout the history of Islam, we've seen the rise of these wicked groups, and where takfir, and disregarding the scholars, criticizing Ahlul Sunnah, and calling to the rebellion against Muslim authorities. We've seen where this goes. We know where it goes. And history bears witness to that. And even contemporary times, look at all the protests. There's hardly a Muslim land that isn't affected by protests. They're talking about this is the second round of the Arab Spring. Look at everywhere. 
Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Yemen. Does it just goes on and on? Libya, Fova. Yes, there's these are complex things with a lot of reasons as well. We're not going to just say it, but most of all of those things began with protesting against the leader. Whether the leader was a Muslim or not, that's another story. But the point being is mostly rebellion leads to destruction and devastation. If it's against a Muslim authority, even if he's oppressive, not only is it haram shar'in, but it also leads to destruction and devastation in this life. If he is a disbeliever, like some of them, if you don't have the ability, look at the, you see the, the reality. In all those same countries that we just mentioned, folda, bloodshed, people are tired in those countries. You can make your rulings in the UK and America and Europe and sit back comfy. But those people live the daily repercussions of that wicked and sinful ideology and medheb and that which leads to destruction. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, تلقى الحق إذا سمعت فإن على الحق نورا. He said, رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said, embrace the truth if you hear it. For verily the truth with the truth comes light is نور. And as the minhaj of Ahl sunnah illustrates, وَكَذَا أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ يَتَلَقُونَ الْحَقِّ وَيَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَيْهِ بِخِلَافِ مَنْ خَالَتَ الْقَلْبُهُ خَالَتَ الْقَلْبُهُ شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْأَهْوَى وَالضَّلَالَاتِ فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا جَاءَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ تَنَاءَ بِنَفْسِهِ عَنْ سَمْعِهَا وَعَنْ قَبُولِ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي جَاءَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى so you see that the difference between Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that when they when the truth comes to them, they listen to it, they hear it, they obey it. And this is different from the people whose hearts are mixed with something from desires and misguidance. For verily, when the truth comes to this one. He, he's disturbed in himself, within himself. He becomes disturbed. And he refuses to listen to it, to the truth. And refuses to accept it. And that, even if it came, that which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the, if you talk to Khan al-Muslimin, if you talk to a lot of these mubtadi'ah, you'll find that they fight it doesn't matter if you gave them ayat after ayat after ayat, hadith, aqwala salaf, and you gave them the correct istilal of those nasus, the correct way to understand those nasus. They will always find a way to flee from it based on their desires. I'm going to give you an example because we need to get into the, just talk about this and then we'll probably end it there. Recently, I had a discussion with several Ikhwan Muslimin. They came to me from the right and the left, literally about five different people. It became a heated discussion. May Allah forgive us and them and guide us and them, I mean. So they were all basically defending that minhaj and some were outright without saying Ikhwan Muslimin. They say a group such as such is oppressed in Egypt and blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, we had a heated discussion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and them and forgive us and them. And all of them, you know, it was all basically talking about, you know, the people, you know, should be protesting and, you know, rebel against the leader, that there's no Muslim leaders and blah, 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 on and on and on and on. I said, listen, I gave him a hadith. I said, let's listen. What about the Quran? I said, obey Allah and obey his messenger and those charged an authority over you. And of course, we know obedience to Allah and His Messenger is 
Mutlaq. You know, it's it's uh it's without exception, it's unrestricted. And those charged in authority with you is muqayyid, as the scholars mentioned. It's muqayyid, meaning it's restricted. So that obedience is not absolute. It is when they are in, their commands are in accordance with the book and the sunnah. That does not mean, as so much nasus shows us, that you rebel against them or you make takfir of them. But rather, you don't obey them in the command of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they tell you you need to drink alcohol, you need to take you need to take a riba, you need to do this. No, because that's a disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that in that command, you don't do. But in anything else that's in accordance with the shara, that doesn't contradict the shara, it doesn't go against it, it doesn't negate it. Then those things you you uh, uh, you you must accept, and that's a part of your sami wa ta'a. The Prophet sallallahu said, "Sami wa ta'a la maryam muslim bima yuhibu wa kariya ma lam yu'miru bi ma'siyatin fi idha umiru bi ma'siyatin fa la sam'a wa la ta'a." Hear and obey the Muslim authority, and that which you love and that which you detest. Ma lam yu'miru bi ma'siyatin. As long as they don't command you to uh, do sinfulness, if they command you. And if he commands you to do sinfulness, there's no hearing and no obeying. What? In that command. Not, does it negate his thought? Otherwise, there'd be no, you know, anyone who makes a mistake in, in, in any command, whether it's the father, whether it's the mother, whether it's the leader, whether it's this or this or this, there will be no obedience. It will be folda. No one understands it like that, that it negates their authority, except the most extreme of the Khawarij or the Khawarij in general. Tekfirin. In contemporary times. So we understand the habit of So in, in the discussion, I mentioned just one text. And it got heated because I said, Here, here's a hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qala Allah, qala Rasul. And all they could say, No, in my view, this. No, so you mean you're defending? I said, No. Why are you telling me that I'm defending? I'm not defending anybody's oppression, anybody's disobedience to Allah. No. Ahlul Sunnah doesn't do that. But Ahlul Sunnah doesn't call to rebel. Ahlul Sunnah doesn't call to takfir. Ahlul Sunnah doesn't call to openly criticizing and causing fitna. But people can't, they see things very black and white. And that's why so many people claim, oh, you're, you are a supporter of this and you're a supporter of this. No, I'm not. We support only the haq. But the haq tells us that we don't criticize the leaders openly. Doesn't mean in private we criticize them. But it means we don't uh, uh, sow discord in the Muslim community for mistakes and sins of the leaders. And we leave the issues of takfir to the ulama, arabaniyun. So there's a whole, there's a whole minhaj. This is the beauty. Ahl Sunnah has a minhaj, a methodology for dealing with the thing. Ahl Sunnah looks at the, the fact that takfir is a takfir of, uh, has uh, two types. Takfir of mutlaq or takfir al ma'ayin. Takfir of mutlaq meaning the general takfir. Whoever does this disbelieves. Takfir al ma'ayin is when you put that, you make that ruling on a specific individual. Tatbiq al hukum ala shaks. It's when you apply that ruling on a particular individual. Ahl al-Bidah doesn't... Lam you may Ahl al-Bidah, they, for them, most of the Khwana Muslimin, takfir is like Faisal, wa'iyadhim billah, min sharrihi, wa'abu qatada wa ghayrihim, and they have different levels, they have different levels of knowledge, and they have different levels of deviance. But all those guys fit in pretty extreme tekfiris. They don't really make a distinguish on that. For them, they see something in their eyes, and none of them are on the level of knowledge as many of our ulama. Even our minor ulama, they're not on their level. The Bahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But they busy themselves and busy the people with those big major Messiah like this. And in their view, 
and then they make tikfir and they make a hokum here and they cause say it's permissible to do this, say do the and the, the evidence is there. I'm not speaking from my desires. I'm speaking from studying. In fact, all those people I mentioned, I've read immensely and listened immensely to their tapes and studied that, and that was part of my master's thesis. I spent years going through their text or through their tapes and, and their their stuff. And Said Kutu, we listened, we 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 read his books. We quote from him. We didn't quote from Sheikh Rabi or Sheikh Hu and Sheikh So and So. No, we looked and we saw that stuff for ourselves. It's clear. Even if the people of desires, they don't like that. I know it affects your chest. But really, go back to the Nasus and go back to the clear and wadi. You can go to uh, Kitab al Imara, Sahih Muslim. How many ahadith? I think there's over 100 ahadith in there. Kitab al Imara. That's Sahih Muslim. Ahl Sunnah accepts Sahih Muslim. Ahl Bidah, they only pick and choose when it suits their desires. They'll come with one hadith and their ta'wil for saying that it's okay to rebel. Then another shubah, I'm going to end with this, that the Ahl Bidah uses. They say, hey, some of the Salaf, they rebelled. Some of the Salaf, they rebelled. Ahl Sunnah says, hmm. Yeah, there were some of the tabi'in and others before that principle of khuruj became an aqid, like it, it became something that they made ijma on it, because that's what you'll find in all the books, the, the books after that, you'll find in the books written about that and about an and aqidah and that deal with these, these uh, masail, You'll see, you'll find so many, we can mention so many the ulama, or sunnah, Imam Tahawi, Imam Babahari, Imam Khalal, Imam uh, al -Laqai. You know, we're just going on and on and on and on and on from all the madhabs that say it's not permissible to rebel against a wicked Muslim leader and that you should make hajj and jihad behind them. So the hujjah is with the nasus. The evidence goes, Ahl Sunnah looks to the strongest evidence. The evidence, we don't make, sh uh, 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 we don't use that as evidence because some of the Salaf, some, made mistakes in Ijtihad. Nam made mistakes in Ijtihad. That was their Ijtihad. They thought it was the right thing to do. They saw Sahaba being killed. So they had that, of course, who wouldn't feel that? But those who were stayed with the Nasus, they are the success, successful ones, and they're correct. Imam Malik said, Kulu Yusibu He said, everyone gets something correct and something wrong except the inhabitant of that grave, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we don't take the qawl, two scholars or three scholars only, or their actions that they did as a hujjah, as dalil. The dalil is the book in the sunnah. The book in the sunnah is clear. As I said, go to uh, Sahih Muslim. And then go to the Shurahat. Go to Imam Nawawi's Sharah Sahih Muslim. Go to the Imam Din. And look at these messiah. So we need to look at these messiah based on, not on our desires. Don't get upset about me about Faisal. He's the one who couldn't control his tongue. Couldn't control his tongue. Made tekfir like some of the things are ludicrous. It's like a cartoon. The guy made tekfir so much. And that's not being, I'm not exaggerating at all. Some of the things you hear in his tapes. He said, and if I wouldn't, if, if, if for myself, I'd make tekfir of me. This is the kind of things the guy, I mean, that sounds like somebody's off a little bit. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Don't get upset. And if you make takfir of someone unjustly, know that it, the hukum descends upon you. The Prophet والسلام, said, Sababu Muslim Fusuk. He said, Cursing a Muslim is fisk, it's wickedness. Waqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ida qala Muslim li akhihi, ya kafir. Lem yakun kadalik. 
فقد باء فقد باء بالكفر. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, if a Muslim says to his brother, oh disbeliever, and that is not the case, that ruling descends on one of them. And if it's not the case, it descends upon him. Dangerous, ahabita fillah. So this is one of the reasons I decided to just speak about this, I guess, not so briefly. And there's so much, we can, you know, these things, there's literally books about this. Massive studies and research. And going back to the books of the Salaf, they all talked about this. This is a, an issue min hajiya. This is why we were against those people. Because the danger that emanates from their ideologies, plural, because they have so many different levels of deviance, is a danger to the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم. It's a danger to humanity, in fact. It's a sickness. So we ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala the Almighty to bless us with ilm al-nafi ruskan tayyib wa amna mutaqabbilan. May Allah protect us from the wickedness of the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn, from amongst the wicked takfiris and the wicked murjia and the wicked sufis and the wicked ones from amongst the maturidiya and the asha'ira and any people of Ahl al-Bidah. May Allah guide and correct them. And bless them to come back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen ya rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.